Welcome to Date with Danu, right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Today, we are speaking about something very important on our segment, The Naked Truth. These shows are designed to make you think, start a conversation, or even just relate to the problems that we face. In 2009, we had a great day to celebrate when the war ended. But did it bring about peace? We are going to be speaking about reconciliation with our young leaders right here on Day On the show, I have two who have decided to contribute towards this country. As my first guest, I have Prashant Devisa. He's a founder of Sri Lanka Unites and now branched out as a global Unites. It's a movement that was formed to create reconciliation, to create awareness about it and promote peace. With me, I also have Vidya Kandiban. She is someone who comes from a flaw background and decided to contribute and give her time towards a reconciled Sri Lanka. Let's speak more with these two vibrant personalities. Hi, my name is Prashant Devisa. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a patriotic Sri Lankan who loves all our people in Sri Lanka and committed to serve. When I think of David Danu, I know that it's completely unpredictable. There's so many elements to it. It's definitely out of the box. And uh, it's definitely something anyone from whatever background can enjoy. I've had the privilege of knowing Danu for almost 13 years now. I've known him through various seasons in life, good times and bad times, times where he spends a lot of time in the bakery, times where he spends a lot of time in the gym, whatever it's been, Danu is consistent. Regardless of the circumstances, he is who he is. And he's refreshingly authentic. He's also predictably unpredictable, but he's a joy to be with and I call him a dear friend. I'm a lawyer, an academic, and uh, the co-national director of Sri Lanka Unites. And over and above everything, I'm a proud Sri Lankan. As far as date with Danu goes, it's looking at the lighter side of things. And um, so many eminent personalities, we see the other side of them, the lighter side of them, and Danu truly brings out the best in them. I've known Danu for the past nine years now. He's been a really good friend and I'm in awe of his growth, the way he has grown over the years to be the person that he is now. Um, of course, we all know the uh, slightly insane side of him, uh, but definitely what he has worked to be today is something commendable. All right, Prashan and Vidya, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Danu. So, Sri Lanka Unites. Now, it has been a youth movement for many years, celebrating? 13 years this year. Fabulous. You started two years ago. A year ago. A year ago. Feels like two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the initial start, I was a part of Sri Lanka Unites, and I'm so happy that I got a chance to meet some brilliant uh, young minds who are willing to contribute towards this. Uh, so, let's speak a little bit about what we're here to speak. We're going to touch on a very sensitive subject called reconciliation. Now we all, everyone out there wants to work on reconciliation in some form. But for those who are watching, what is reconciliation? Let's just give a definition to that. Yeah. I think that's a very important question, Danu. Uh, many times people say that they understand what they're doing when they're doing reconciliation, but even in our own languages, in single and Tamil, there isn't a proper word to define what reconciliation is. Mm. So when we started this movement trying to pursue reconciliation with youth leadership, we fi went to find what's the true meaning of reconciliation and we found it in the Hebrew word tikkum ulam, which means to heal, repair and transform. All these three things happening together. Because just because the war ended, that doesn't mean we have peace and reconciliation. We have to work at it. And when we look at our history, we have these similar patterns of violence continuing to haunt our nation. So we have to find sustainable peace by reconciling. 
having justice for all people, a place where every Sri Lankan, regardless of their ethnicity, religion, or socioeconomic background, feels that they're proud and they're an equal citizen, and a place where everyone can thrive and that the world will know that we are truly one nation. What was your reason behind joining this movement? Um, I think having grown up seeing the war and the effects of it, um, not physically being in the war, but as we all know, it, um, the effects um, extended to even Colombo. But um, having seen these differences, I really wanted the country to be a safe and peaceful place to live in um, for all ethnicities. So I, I mean, you know, the work that Sri Lanka Unites does is uh, it's immense. It's fantastic. And I just wanted to be a part of it. Um, you know, I always, we, in the job that I do, I get a chance to connect with so many people. And the opinion that people have about the war is very different individually. And what, what we need to understand is sometimes the way we see the war is very different to how another person will see it. Some may want it, some may not, some may have just got sick of it, some are just happy that it's over. There are so many opinions. In speaking to nearly 10,000 youth over the years, what have you all understood about the impact on the war? Some may have not been born into the war, but they would have seen it from the outside. But what is the opinion that they have? First of all, a modest correction. Uh, in 13 years, we've, we've calculated we may have engaged up to a million youth. Ah, really? Uh, and so, That's amazing. Uh, so we have been asking this question, you know, what do you understand of the reasons for the war? How do you see the country after the war? And it's crazy because most of our Sri Lankan youth have a very secluded experience. Mm. They only know people from their own ethnicity, their own religion, their own background, and they have opinions about the others. And so even our school system, there are 10,162 schools under the Ministry of Education. Only 112 schools have single medium and Tamil medium. So there's very little opportunity for these kids to engage. We've done research across the country. Uh, over 70% of these youth don't have a friend, a meaningful friendship across their ethnicity or their religion. So because of their segregated lifestyles and negative stereotypes and prejudices about the other, it's always biased. There is not an inclusive idea of where we are going, understanding the other person's pain. So it's always at a risk of future challenges and future violence because people are left divided. And so we need to make sure that this generation doesn't feel that same impact, that they learn from the other, experience the other, and start dreaming together for a collective future. All right. So this is the base for this show. We're going to be speaking to four uh, wonderful youth representatives who have come from different parts of this country to speak about their take on reconciliation, their take on the war. Uh, we all have our stories, like um, Prashan knows my story, Vidya has had the effects of the war as a Tamil family and what she went through. I was born into the war and I saw the war in front of my eyes. I saw it happen, I saw the bombs going off, I saw terrorists walk past my house, I have terrorists who have walked into my house, I've had terrorists who have kept a gun on my head. So that's all because I asked for my own mother. So everyone has a different side to how terrorism or the war or someone's selfish gain has ended up leaving this country burning for so many years. But it's time that we stop and it's time that we do not sort of add fuel to it and mm. let it grow at another time. As I always say, maybe the institution call a terrorist movement may be over, but yet the people who believe in such organizations, not here, across the world, will always remain. And we should never give them a reason to grow, to be someone saying, okay, I feel like I need to fight for it. Whereas there are so many better ways of finding the reconciliation that you need. So this is what the four youth you are going to meet on the show are doing, and I'm so happy to have them on the show. Let's connect with them after the break to stay. Sometimes we need the stats to understand this is the impact that we can make in terms of the schools that promotes different languages, they come in together. Um, you have a kid today and trying to bring your child up in this environment, have you ever thought of migrating? Um, never, Danu. Um, because this is my home. I don't want to leave this place. And this is exactly what 
I said before, I want Sri Lanka to be a place which is open and peaceful for everyone to live in. Um, so migration was never an option for me. No. Now, Prashant, you had the option. Mm -hmm. you, you, you were studying in the US, you had the option to just stay there and contribute towards the economy there, but you decided to come here and go poor. So when you had to make this call, I'm sure lots of people would have said you are stupid. Mm -hmm. But what made you make this decision? I felt called and I felt that we are born in this country for a purpose and we can't turn our back on our country. And so especially the war was still going on. I was studying in the States and I had a really good opportunity in Washington, D.C. I felt like my career path was in place. But then when I thought about the situation in the country, I thought, what if there's a youth movement in Sri Lanka to build a new nation? where it's a reconciled country. And to do that, you couldn't do that from there. And I felt I needed to come. And so many people are like, you're quitting a job, quitting opportunities, you must be out of your mind. That's not the American dream. But no, I'm here and I wanted to serve. So initially, like you said, I was doing four other jobs to make a living and then doing Sri Lanka Unites full time as well. Mm. Uh, no one took us seriously, but uh, today uh, we are an established movement. We've got 50 staff working for the movement. We've got 10 officers. Now we're a little bit more stable as a movement. But it, everyone in the movement has made a sacrifice because they believe in a greater Sri Lanka for every Sri Lankan. And they're working day in and day out for that. They're not in for the money. Uh, we pay very little. <laughs> but they're in it because they want to make sure their children have a greater future. If you're given the opportunity to tell me one big problem that we face up to date, which could be the reason why we have to still walk in the same path over and over again, it has been now. 11 years since the war ended. What would you say is the pressing issue that we can't just boom and like really go to the next level as a country? I think it's really, it boils down to ignorance. Um, that's the reason why this entire divide is going on. I mean, Sri Lankans should first acknowledge the fact that they are all Sri Lankan. Um, look beyond the divide, you know. Uh, I know a lot of people speak about uh, embracing the similarities, but we should learn to embrace the differences as well. So. Um, Getting rid of the ignorance is, is crucial. Mm. All right. Well, now that they're here on the show, uh, let's sort of tell everyone to watch this show on a segment called Update Your Social Media. So while we update status, Prashan, you can do the honors. Um, for you, what do you feel that the youth faces today as an obstacle? Um, I think a lot of social norms, what they have been told about the other ethnicity, about the other religion, um, these... Who tells them these? Family, upbringing? upbringing, it could be upbringing, it could be, yeah, the surrounding that, they're, um, that they live in. Um, I wouldn't want to drag in educational institutions, but mostly the, the families and, uh, yeah, the people who they are with. Uh, Prashant, as someone who has dealt with many politicians in the past so many years, like we, we have I spoken have. to them, <laughs> no, like spoken to them, yeah. you have interacted with them in different areas. But I'm just saying, as someone you have spoken to, do you feel politicians today still believe that they need to campaign based on divided? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we st see a lot of it, even in this campaign right now and every campaign since independence, there have been elements that have used a divide and rule tactic. And that's because of incompetence. You haven't accomplished anything. You can't go back to your base and say, I, I delivered on my previous promises. You can't show the depth of your knowledge and your capacity because maybe that doesn't exist. So then you go to the least common denominator is to create fear in their hearts about the other and say, I will protect you. I am your person. And so for so long, we have voted for our person. Mm. People vote along ethnicity and yeah. we haven't voted for competence. We haven't voted for integrity. And that's been a curse for the country. Mm. We always have a different take to this thing called the war. Uh, either we are fortunate or unfortunate to be born into this because it teaches you something in life. Uh, it taught me something because, um, because the, the idea of what life can be was taught to me through the war because otherwise I would have had a very sheltered life in Jaffna in the comfort of my home, my family history and the luxury of what I was born into. But it sort of crippled me to make me realize, oh, there's so much more to life. 
the war that was fought by two different people affected people just from all parts of life. People died just like you know how they say you die in the crossfire. Lots of people's life changed in the mm -hmm. crossfire. Um, you know, the take on war is very different to everyone. Uh, how Prashant sees it, to how Vidya sees it, to how I see it, it's very different. I was born into the war and that's why it, this case is, or this subject is very personal to me because I have seen how opportunities were lost. How uh, I, I know how it is to go to school and have my mum on the middle of the road worried because there was a helicopter that went too close thinking that it's going to be a bomb that's going to fall on us. I've seen a gun being kept at people's head and being shot. I have seen a gun kept on my own head for the fact that I just simply asked where my mother is. Um, so the thing called war brings out the ugly in everyone mm. and I think it's time that we see the good in it. I'm so happy that I went through it because I'm able to understand and empathize with people who would have been caught in traffic just because a bomb went on Gall Road and be like, okay, I didn't get hurt because of it, but yet that impact, why should somebody see that before they go to work? Why should somebody have the fear of getting into a bus or a train and fe fear the fact that could this be my last journey? That's the last thing you want. You want to say goodbye to your home and return back safe. And that is the most important thing. So the war always plays different parts. So if somebody says, you will never understand about the war because you were not born in it, everyone has a part to play in it. We have all been affected because of a subject called war. But right now it's time to reconcile. And that's why we have four people from four different walks of life, from four different areas of this country, who are speaking about one thing. They just want one country. They just want to all live in peace and they want to uh, create a future here. And let's help them do that. And that's what we're going to be talking about today on the show. And we'll meet you with these four young leaders when we do come back on the other side. Welcome back to the show. Prashan and Vidya are with me on the show, and now I'm joined by Ani Nilavan. Everyone calls him Ani. Say it, Ani. Okay. So he's from Mulathiv. He's also uh, for the centre uh, of Sri Lanka Unites. He's the centre manager of the Mulathiv Reconciliation Centre. That's amazing. And you're the youngest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great thing. All right. So for those who may be alien to this, uh, in Jaffna, when in the peak of the war the Tigers will just approach you and say, join the movement. It has happened to me twice, and I was just six and a half. And this is the truth. I was seated once on the step outside my house, and because I'm asked to look at the clouds, imagine the objects that I see, and report it to mommy. That's my homework from four to five, honest to God. This were, these were entertainment for us in Jaffna. One of these times, the person asked me to join. I was six and a half. I barely can stand straight, but I didn't know what I was going to do in a movement. Uh, and once again, I was approached before we left to Colombo saying that you should join. So joining the movement is something that was forced upon you most of the times, or you had the willingness to go and join. His parents served the LTTE in different capacities. Um, how was it when you were growing up? So when I was growing up, it was really tough for me because just, you know, they told us they are the freedom fighters. But for myself, when I was growing up, I was 10 years old when the war, war came to an end. So I felt like, you know, the I was wondering, my parents will be alive or not. Mm. And Till this is in Mullathiva. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I always say Mullathiva, even the grass is not green. It's just grey. There's something so eerie about that place because it's the capital of the war. I always see it that way. So. Um, your Appa and Amma, what, what were their thoughts on the war? They, they strongly believed on violence. Okay. So they, they felt like they can win the Ulam, I mean that uh, Vanni, mm. uh, while fighting and getting for freedom for their own life. So they strongly believed on that. That was their mentalities. And how did you see it differently? What made you see it differently? I believed on violence and weapon. It was totally wrong. When we're fighting against our way, we can get a freedom. And I believe, nowadays I'm believing, I am, I'm having more friends around the nations. So Muslims or Sinhalese. But at the beginning, I, I thought I want to kill singular people because they all are against myself. But now I have friends, many friends in singular community. And what do your parents think about you today? So when I'm sharing that I empathize myself with other people. So I'm sharing my thoughts with my parents. But nowadays, they are really okay with that. I don't know how they changed, but they hosted 
many of the singular friends in my home, even many Muslim friends in my home. More than 30 days, my friends stayed in my home. So now they approach them and they empathize with them. So this is the only way. When we talk to people, when we empathize them and acknowledge their wrongs and rights, we come to the point and we win their mind as well. My God, that's so, uh, so well put. Um, in, in, sorry, very rarely I don't go short of words, but today I have. Uh, today, working with so many people from all walks of life, what do you tell them about when you were growing up? We have to learn the history, what was past. Actually, we want to look it into the positive way rather than negative. Especially, we are getting approached negative way mostly. Like when we talk about violence, many of the young people engage in violence. We know that in the LTT, it was a movement for fi freedom fights. But even when we see that, there are a lot of young people engaged in the movement after their OILs, while they are doing their OILs, they left studies and joined. So, what I want to tell is like, we have to acknowledge our wrongs and rights. So this is what we want to do. Then we want to share our knowledge. We want to share our what we passion for with other peoples. So we all are belong to the human beings. So we can we can able to acknowledge each others. That's the only way to get freedoms and live happy. It's amazing. So well said. Um, you all would have had messages coming from the diaspora. That's one of the biggest parts of a communal problem. What does the diaspora have to say about the movement or about the work that you all do? Mm. Uh, some have questions, you know, are you all really about reconciliation? I, do you believe in justice and equality? Is this just a superficial initiative? And one thing we've always said is if it's superficial, we won't be doing this for 13 years. You know, we love these people. We've known them from a very young age, you know, hundreds and thousands of kids across the country. So much potential, brilliant minds. They can lead us forward. This is about paving the way for them to lead the country. Paving the way for them to show us what reconciliation looks like. Because we're all jaded with our past, mm. but we have to learn from them. And we shouldn't try to brainwash them to do what we did because we failed. And our parents' generation failed. So maybe less opinions and more listening. Mm. And that's what we tell them. And yes, we want to fight for justice for all people in this country. When you were 10 years old, did you ever think you'll be here talking about promoting peace? Never. I was full of the racist, even until um, my age of 16, I was full of racist. Why? Like you, these are all what who told you? It's just what, what people told you? This is what I learned from my phobias, like, you know, uh, when I was in my family, they didn't teach me, but I learned it from them. Okay, they didn't teach me that they are against, but I learned it from them. You understood? I felt, yeah, I understood that single is against myself. This is what I understood from my child. So then I got a chance to participate in Future Leaders Conference in 2016. So that time, uh, that time, my very first time I met singular friends and Muslim community in my life. Were you scared when you first met them? Yeah, the first day I scared. First day I didn't think, I don't, I actually I didn't know about the program where I'm going, but after I met the, those people, I felt like I, I was really racist. I, I honestly I'm saying I was really racist because I felt at the beginning I want to shoot them. Now how can I make friendship with them? So when I, I was divided into some groups. So that time I met some people like oh say they are Sinhalese and Muslims. I I didn't communicate with them at the first day and second day it naturally I changed myself. I don't know what happened there, but really I changed myself and started talking to these singular people and I shared my story how I undergone this war situation. Then they shared, especially I met a person, his father was uh, in military, Sri Lankan army. So when I hearing his, his side, yeah, his side, I felt that the same thing I felt in my life while I was growing. So that, that was, at, actually I, at the beginning I misunderstood them. That's amazing. It's amazing to hear it from you as someone who has been born into the war. And I'm so happy that at the age of 10, you were able to dream big, were able to dream different. And you changed your mind and saw what this country is actually made of. I'm so proud of you. And the way you spoke, you just broke me. Um, I'm so happy. And I'm so happy that you came 
and was a part of a Future Leaders Conference that changed your mind. Uh, so, so proud of you. I'm really proud of you. I'm honestly saying it. Uh, this is just the first story. One of the reasons why we wanted to bring this out is the fact that we want you to see sometimes we might just read it off a book or just hear it in a documentary and it's not the same when you actually sit with someone and speak to them. We'll speak to more when we do come back up. Right now with me, I have Lakmal, who is from Mathara. And what is Lakmal currently working with Sri Lanka United States? He's the centre manager of the Nuvarelia Reconciliation Centre. Fabulous. Uh, Lakmal, thank you for joining me on the show. It's great to be inspired by you, but your, your best friend is uh, the person who we had on the show before. How did that friendship start? Yeah, uh, first, thank you, Danu, uh, for inviting us for this uh, programme. Actually, uh, I met Ani uh, at the ninth uh, conference, uh, conference uh, Future Leaders Conference. So uh, after that, he uh, joined uh, with Sri Lanka United as a staff member. So uh, that friendship uh, uh, was building up after he joined with the, the staff. So uh, first time I visited to Mulatiu for uh, uh, I was uh, bringing uh, some uh, flood donation. Uh, 2019 mm. uh, in December. Uh, so that was my first visit, and I stayed uh, at Ani's place. Mm. Actually, uh, that's where actually that friendship and the brotherhood uh, grew. Yeah, uh, begins uh, because um, uh, I saw that uh, how difficult lives they lead, and uh, how uh, how uh, less opportunities they have. Uh, especially the youth people and uh, I walk around the village with Ani and uh, the one of the special uh, memory there uh, that uh, Ani's uh, father prepared a lunch for me mm. but unfortunately we couldn't have that <laughs> oh, <you> uh, <laughs> because Ani didn't uh, uh, tell me that uh, his father uh, uh, has cooked it for, yeah, you. Uh. Cooked for me uh, but uh, when we, uh, after we sharing the donations, we uh, went back to his home mm. and uh, I heard some, uh, the, his father was uh, blaming uh, his, uh. Uh, I couldn't understand the right. language, but uh, I seemed that, uh, I asked uh, Ani, what happened? So after that, he told me that his father had cooked for me, oh. but uh, I missed that, but uh, uh, in the night, we uh, had, had our dinner together. Yeah, the how was it when you first met your other friends from other languages, other backgrounds? How was it for you? Yeah, the, uh, at first uh, it was a bit uh, difficult to communicate with them because of the language. But uh, did you hate them? Uh, yeah, first uh, hate me. I didn't trust them actually mm. because I don't know them. I haven't worked with them before, so I don't know uh, what they uh, come up. So, um, always uh, there is a uh, doubt mm. about them, what kind of people them. Uh, but uh, gradually, uh, when we working together, but they also like us. Even the language is different, even the uh, society background is different, but we have the same, uh, same uh, interest, interesting toward uh, uh, sports or arts so and uh, the, the purpose uh, and aims of our lives mm. uh, so I uh, I think uh, uh, we are from different backgrounds but mm. the uh, problem is uh, sometimes people think that uh, my pain is bigger than them they think our pain is bigger than them yeah. this is not a problem about whose pain is bigger the pain is pain for anyone uh, but uh, we don't try to uh, empathize. What was your pain. thought in 2009 when the war was, when the war ended? What did you think? What was the first thing that you thought? Because yeah. your uh, father was in the military as well. Yes, uh, uh, I just thought uh, we won. All the things uh, will uh, disappear. I, I mean, uh, the uh, bombing things, and uh, we, we don't need to be fear anymore. Uh, and we we won the war, and uh, I was uh, celebrating it with my friends, riding bicycle all around the 
uh, mm. city uh, waving the national flag and uh, eating uh, kiribat mm. most of the people uh, prepared kiribat at that time and sharing uh, did you feel that it's a now it's a singhala rata or did you feel like the voice over because at that time have you been a part of a reconciliation movement no 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 at that time did you uh, feel it's a singhala rata or did you feel it's a rata for everyone uh, this should be the rata for everyone because uh, yeah th there can be some uh, uh, background of from uh, uh, singhala buddhist culture but we know that uh, when we look at the history the tamils uh, hindu culture also i don't know how how long it ranked to the history so uh, thousands of years we we have lived together hundreds of years great i'm always happy to know that somebody has changed their mind and somebody has made an initiative to change uh, thank you so very much for your insight and i'm so happy that you and ani have such a great friendship that has uh, broken boundaries from mm -hmm. matra to mulati is a is a huge two different uh, worlds two different <laughs> worlds literally <laughs> genuinely um we are going to speak more with prashan and vidya and also two other leaders who are yet to come on the show so do stay tuned this day to stuff now on the show i have sinan who has a brilliant story about how he sees reconciliation but before that i wanted to speak to vidya um as as someone who lived in colombo during the war and also someone who is who is identified as tamil <laughs> uh, how was it how was it for you to live here like you know they say colombo didn't have many problems yeah. but how was your mindset here i think for me the first um exposure of this entire violent situation was when i was um 5 years old uh, my school i was in nursery at the time shared the common wall with uh, the army headquarters and it wow, was bombed what a, what a wall to share yeah <laughs> and it was bombed <laughs> and i just remember the entire place collapsing my memory of it was just absolutely horrible and then from school i went back home which was very in close proximity to my school and there again the ceiling had collapsed and everything so you know it's it's been like that experiencing these um, attacks on and off in colombo and also hearing about the attacks up north mm. you know it has been um, very frightening and even more so because my father was a former attorney general of sri lanka so the constant fear that something might happen to him you know having to go to school and listening out to the to any noises that mm. time where he travels from uh, home to work mm. you know whether something would happen to him on the way so that constant fear to live in that constant fear for so long um it was um, yeah i think every sri lankan would can relate to that um in jaffna there was a rich wonderful muslim community that used to grow up with us and i still remember that our stayer his name was nons uh, and we loved him because he used to do all this very cut work detailed kurtas for dada and it was it was like you have to give an order like a month before and that's how and um, he was like a dear friend to us he used to come home have a meal and he was a part of our lives and one day all of a sudden all the muslims were sent away from jaffna and i still remember that it was in 92 if i'm correct uh, mm -hmm. and my mom was so upset that we couldn't because that was dada's friend and he was not to be seen and what was great is when we came to colombo in 93 we found nuns mm -hmm. and he even stitched my uniform when i was going to st peter's and it was so nice because he had stitched clothes for my grandfather my father and then he was able to make something for me and i i'll always treasure that and the fact that we were never brought up to just see them as a muslim we were brought up to see as our ah, dad's friend so say hi to uncle so there was never a element where mummy mm. or dad are told what i didn't even know that nons was a muslim name mm. nobody knows these things when you're when you're a kid but it's what you put into a child what matters tell me your story now you yeah. you are working with uh, i'm working with sri lanka united as well as a center manager of uh, para reconciliation center so my story like uh, you know from the war so from the war so it ended in uh, even it ended in the 2009 but when i'm do, when i when the uh, war end so i was doing i remember uh, all over so mm. my friends like kind of uh, so now when you hear the news so that time it it's like a all all it's like it's like a full of panic mm. so i still remember so when i 
uh, go out of home. My mom used to say, "Be careful." So before the war or after the war? During the war. During the war. Yeah. Okay. So it was like a so used to say so and dad when when he goes he was a farmer so when he goes so no guarantee so he come back or not so because uh, there were so many incidents like uh, where did you grow up in kalmuni kalsainamuri yes and every day was a fear yes every day was a fear so he like used to say so you know the harvest after the uh, petty harvest so it's not sure like bringing the uh, the harvest to home because there are so many loot and everything on the way when mm. he so it, it was like a kind of uh, full of panic life so it la yeah it went so so after the uh, after the o level so it means the uh, end of the war so still the panic was there because uh, we kind of uh, felt ignorance everyone's talking up their rights about their rights so even the tamil communities and singhalese communities so we are kind of uh, so who cares about us so that time it's kind of uh, so many panic and depressed within me and the community as well and in the recent past we had so many problems that sort of provoked unwanted yeah. news about the fact that you know a fight against the muslims and uh, as someone who saw it as another minority in this country i felt sad because we have shared some great memories and like i will always share on the lines of food i really don't want my batla pang to go berserk you know i want i want everyone to be around so that we can celebrate more and more festivals and have more national holidays so you know i want a bit it's always nice to have a party and that's to have a party you need to have more culture how did you feel at the time when there were so many things that were brought in as news Yes uh, so as i said earlier it was so panic for me and for the community as well so even at that time i my friends as well so when i talk about uh, these stuff they kind of uh, advised me don't go out of this uh, out of this home down or the bubble because you will uh, feel like a outsider yeah outsider and uh, they will threat you so those kind of uh, advice i got from the people as well and after the easter attack how was because after the easter, easter yes. attack it became like you know just because one person who did it does not define everyone so were you treated different after last year's attack exactly so i i went again to the same, same. situation so when i visit again for the for the purpose to kalampu so i got or got out from the bus so many checkpoints and different kind of you know the i sense uh, tissues of what they looking at you and how they looking at you so mm. when i open the bags it's kind of uh, so many like uh, you know yeah. the checkpoints they put their all the hands and check is there anything after the seeing the I just identity card so yeah. yeah it was so it went back to what we fought against for so yes. many years exactly yeah. it's it's like looking back at uh, what happened you know looking at the id card or oh, your name is this so yes. we have to just check you just having a muhammad Yeah. yeah it became a problem yeah. but where is what's so sad is all these ones are seated on this one couch and they all are from different men they are all having a, a ball of a time and whispering in the corner there and i can't concentrate on the show as well but that's amazing with the fact that you know they can this is what we need to know just yeah. because one person out there decides to do something wrong it doesn't define and scar the whole community exactly. and you have worked with so many people yes. and i think you are a great ambassador to say that you know yeah. as someone who represents the muslim community you just want a connection with everyone and yeah. that's what's wonderful mm -hmm. prashan how was it as sri lanka you know as a movement when we have just worked our way from this war and this bomb goes off leave alone the problem that created in the country the scar that it created in people's mind how did y'all work through it obviously it was a traumatic experience for the whole country especially because no one saw it coming it just shocked the nation and it re-traumatized so many people but the fear was that was going to cause a new civil war now mm. and so we had to make sure that all our young people across the country who were part of the movement were strong advocates saying violence will not solve the problem let's work to get closer and understand that a few extremists did this and let's stand against that and not each other and so sinan did an amazing job uh, for that one he has inspired his community especially the muslim community in the east not to be so segregated and just by themselves but to come and engage with the rest of the country he has encouraged women in his community to come forward in leadership and these are young people who are shaping a new way of thinking way of thinking for the entire community and that's remarkable hardly 25 years old but they're doing this yeah. and they were leading you know there were times where in certain areas uh, some muslims were afraid to go because they will get attacked or they were afraid that they get attacked after this but go and build relationships and say hey let's solve this problem we are in this together definitely and that's the leadership that we need to look to around that's 
that's brilliant well done um, all of them deserve a round of applause we'll see you on the other side with our final guest on the show do stick around it's David Dunn <laughs> Welcome back to the show and right now we have Shiva Shanti joining us on the show. She's better known as Shiva, correct? Yes. All right. So Shiva's story is that she went to India as refugee and then decided to come back to Sri Lanka. Yeah. How was this transition for you? How young were you when you went to India? I was a baby. Okay. So from Jaffna you all went to India? Yeah. So we were uh, from, my parents were from Jaffna but because of the war they moved back to Manad because one of our relatives were settled there. So it was better at that time, but later on, so what my mother tells is, I think uh, for me, I grew up in Colombo, like most of the time, but my siblings, my mother, everybody has gone through war. So I think I'm privileged and I was safe growing up here. So for me, the memories of war would be what I have heard from them and what I saw in the news, but basically what I have heard from them. Because why we went to uh, India is one thing, when I was in my mother's womb, uh, so this is one incident she always tells. Mm. So there was a granite attack and then my mother still has a granite piece in her head. So it was like in middle of nowhere from Jaffna we have to leave everything and go back to Manar. And there also the same thing happened. So and then she decided okay this is not going to be good. Like with uh, my like niece, yeah, some of her nephews, we then shifted back to India. I think but in India you don't feel like home. Like my mother didn't feel like home. Basically, it's not. I didn't feel like home. She didn't feel Although like home. Although this country let her down in so many ways than one, she still wanted to come back here. Yeah. Even witnessing such things. Exactly. I think this is where she wanted to be. And you are very passionate about gender equality. Yes. Okay. And where do you think we are lacking the most? It's something that people, when it, every time they try to put down women. For me, the first time is I have seen a lot of violence. Like I grew up in a household where there was a lot of violence, so I think I've always hated like men being dominant and associating with men. So when I went to the Future Leaders Conference, that was a new thing because me, who is from Jaffna, but that was the first time I went to Jaffna, mm. like for a Future Leaders Conference, and there I met people from various backgrounds and there we worked together. And after that, we had the Show You Care program from SLU. I think right after the conference, it happened. So when I went there, like we got the chance to get into buses and speak about violence and all those stuff. So when I went back and told this to my classmates, like the guys. Show You Care movement uh, was an initiative to create awareness about yeah. women being abused so in buses. So it's stop harassment of women. of women. Yeah, there you go. So that's in just the most basic way. Yeah. So for me, it was shocking that men didn't, men didn't know. Like the guys who studied in my class, they saw me like climbing into buses and speaking and they were like, why are you doing this? Yeah. And I said, it's something that happens. Like when I go to school, I have faced it. A lot of women face it. They were like, does that really happen? Mm. So for them, that is not abuse. They don't think it as a problem. It's very normal. Like we have normalized everything. That's a problem. It's yeah. just, it has happened so much because now it's just like, mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. But that's remarkable. So right now you have come back. And what is your take on working with so many people from different walks of life? from you, you have Vidya, you have Prashant, like the, even they come from two walks of life. How has it been? I think it's the first, first of all, as you say, like all of us working together, the platform of us working together. That's something we lack in Sri Lanka. We don't have a platform where everybody can work equally and people don't see the age, ethnicity, gender, anything. Like you can be of whatever age or what, any ethnicity, but you can have the talent. And for you being able to show that out, that's what we need. I think if that comes out, the basic problem is people don't have opportunities. They see people from certain ethnicity going well, people from another place doing well. So that's where, like, as previously said, there's ignorance and they don't think, see what the problem is. Yeah. And this w one thing that I, I think I did, uh, I did a quarantine special with Prashan and I was so happy to say that this formula called Sri Lanka Unites, this, this little brainchild that sort of grew here has become a global movement now called uh, Global Unites and many countries across the world are practicing this and uh, how many countries uh, are with Global Unites? Today we have 13 countries with similar movements and um, that's remarkable and uh, to know that it's our and it's it, it all grew here and we, we are examples to them and that that is that itself is such a great thing. Prashant you do phenomenal work Vidya and the whole team that anyone who believes in a better tomorrow is a part of 
Sri Lanka unites, I think, is a part of a movement that is for uh, to be better. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is um, I called and told them that I saw a post on Instagram which promoted terrorism uh, from someone who lives abroad. And it broke my heart because uh, just imagine uh, you go to sleep one day and you sleep in the veranda of your house. This is in a place called Chillala. Um, I still remember the sheet that I was wrapped in. It was a green and white checked sheet. Uh, and when I woke up, my father was seated against the wall like this saying, I'm not leaving. And I was very confused. I was like, where's my coffee? Uh, then mommy was like, there's a problem. Everyone in our village had left. And we had no choice. My father, who's like six feet tall, who was a doctor for generations and who had the whole legacy behind him, had to settle into a camp, a camp that barely let us stand up and sit on the ground and just wait for some answer to come our way. And that is what war can do. It can destroy not only the way you live. That is not what I was trying to get at. It can destroy the way you feel and the way you belong to a country. The last thing you want is to wake up and have your life changed. This doesn't only happen for the Tamils. It also happens to the Sinhalese. It also happens to the Muslims. It happens to everyone. Everyone's effect has a ripple effect on someone. And we have seen it. And I think we are, ex like for example, if we see the waves speaking too loud for us, we are like tsunami. It's just like that. If you see someone who is brewing some kind of an ethnic conflict, mm. it is a chance for you to stand up and say, listen, this is, yeah, this is my place. We don't want more people to live in rented homes, in uh, terrible conditions, to give up on studies, to have parents who have died, or even go into another country and feel like a stranger. The last thing you want is to feel accepted. So the war doesn't have a direct impact. It has so many levels mm -hmm. of it. And I think movements like this, conversations like this, are very important. And today, I think we saw four people who are actually the bright light to our country. and. The way they speak, just I have to thank you all mm -hmm. for not only bringing them here, but also giving them the confidence to speak. Mm -hmm. So thank you so very much. And yeah, thank you, much. yes, thank you, Danu, for having us. I think um, highlighting what these uh, kids have gone through is very important because it's not only to them. I mean, you know, these experiences are very general. People have actually gone through it and it is a reality. We have to accept that reality and now work towards um, peace and reconciliation. Yeah. yeah. So for those who are watching, just to encourage you that there are, if you are feeling discouraged and distressed saying Sri Lanka will never learn, when will we ever overcome? Just to let you know that there is a young generation out there who's working every day. You know, they've been working for 13 years. You don't know their names, you don't know what they're up to, but they're working every day to build a better future to build a just and fair nation for all. And so you can get behind them, support them, and encourage them. Because either you can dismiss them, but to dismiss what they're doing, you need to have a model of great success. Mm. My generation doesn't, and the previous generation most certainly doesn't. So let's stand by them and encourage them. So thank you, Danu, for the opportunity to highlight these stories and thank their work. You. Thank you. Uh, and every opportunity that you get will make, uh, you know, make such things be spoken about, and that's the most important thing. On that note, we need to wrap things up on the show. Thank you so very much for joining us on our Naked Truth edition today with Danu. Until we see you again, you have a separate great day.